welcome this morning. Go ahead and stand up. We're just going to prepare our hearts to let out the praise of Jesus in this place today. <laughs> we just come before you, Jesus.
speak it and believe it this morning. There's power. There is by live stream last night and you know we have a lot of junk going on in our nation right now and you know it's, it's important that we as the body of Christ st stand up and and declare the truth and declare and, and stand up for all peoples amen and we know what's going on we know what happened the other day and it was wrong it was very wrong and and we want you to know that as a church you know there there is no color in Christ and we have to remember that Amen. and I came across this today and, and I just like this that somebody posted the problem is sin not skin the problem the answer is grace not race Amen. Our, our nation needs Jesus Amen. it needs Jesus and, and that's the only thing that's going to change what, what is going on in our nation and you know we can pass all kinds of laws but until you change the color of a person's heart by the blood of Jesus, it doesn't matter how many laws are passed. Yeah, yeah it'll it'll solve it, it'll solve the problem for a little while, but guess what? Then you got to come up with another law because people are still going to find ways to hate someone else if they don't have Jesus in their heart. Amen. You know, years ago there was a gentleman down in a, a gentleman down in South Africa. His name was Ray McCauley. He started at Rama South Africa, and long before apartheid ever hit South Africa. His church had 50% white, 50% black. And if you know what happened in South Africa, you know all what happened. Government leaders were coming to him and asking him, how are you doing this? How are you, you know, we, we are trying or we, we just don't, you know, all this civil unrest, they'd come to him secretly because they didn't want anybody to know that they were doing this. And he said, you're, you're going about it the wrong way. You gotta change people's heart. And it only comes by Jesus Christ says in Ephesians that Jesus brought peace to all people. He broke down that dividing wall of hostility, first between us and God. And until a person gets a relationship with God, they're going to have hate in their heart. And then between one another. And so I think it's time that, that we, we stand up and say, you know what, this is not right. This is wrong. And not only that, but we do what we know we can do. And, and to build that relationship, and it has to come through Jesus Christ. That's the only way it can come. And, you know, in Christ, the Bible says there's neither Jew nor Greek, right? That's cultural. There's neither slave nor free. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And, and we have to look at ourselves. No matter what our skin color is, we all of us need to look at ourselves and say, hey, Jesus, is there anything in me? Is there anything in me? We have to. We have to be honest with ourselves. You know, and if, sometimes we've been raised in, 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 a, in a community or in a certain uh, place and, and 
you know? And, and we got to get rid of this white against black and black against Hispanics. And, you know, yeah. we have to, you know what? We're all, when we're in Christ, and we have to, we have to set that standard yes, as believers. Amen. So I want us to pray, but I also want, some of you know this and are aware of this, Pastor Gil, his stepdad, they had to make a hard decision the other day and, and to uh, take him off life support. And that happened Thursday night, and, uh, you know, we visited about it, and, and just, it's tough, you know, a man that's been in your life and his mom, now she doesn't have a husband and that, and that support. So I want us to take as a church body, take some time again to pray for them. I know they're going to be going down because they need to help mom, right? Her name's Teresa, correct? And so when you think of it and be lifting them up, you know, we live in a different time. He said the hardest thing is, Pastor, the hardest thing is not being able to be there with my mom and being down there. And, and so let's just pray this yeah. morning. Lift them up. If you're with your husband or wife or uh, someone that you feel comfortable holding hands with this morning, let's just pray. Father, we just come. First of all, we, we pray for our nation. Father God, we just come against this division in our nation, Lord God. And Father, we understand the enemy is out to divide. We understand the enemy is out to separate, Lord God, and, and cause division, Lord God. And Father, uh, Jesus said he, he's the author of lies. He's the author of, of hatred. It, it was in him from the beginning, and he doesn't know how to do anything else. And we just break his power over, over our nation right now and over people's hearts. And Lord Jesus, we just ask you to move in our nation. Our nation needs you uh, all across every spectrum, every, every cultural background, the Lord God, every, every race, Lord God, that, that they realize the only answer is Jesus. And Lord, we pray for our leaders that they understand that. Lord God, it's not religion. It's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and allowing him to come in and change our hearts and to see, Lord God, that, that you've created all people. And so we just honor you right now, Father. We just ask you to move. Holy Spirit, move. Move across our land today. Heal our land, Lord. We ask for healing across our land, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just, those that, that ha have done this, Lord God, that justice will come in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we thank you for it. And Father, we pray for Pastor Gill and his family. We pray for his mom, Teresa. And Lord God, as they lost a dad, a husband, a, a father. And Father God, we just pray for your comfort, Father God. And the same comfort that they have given to others, Lord God, according to the Bible, that it says that he will bring comfort to us as well. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the grace and peace. And Father, just open the pathway for them to be able to go down. Lord God, open that door for them, Father, so that they can minister. Father God, and they can help, Father God, in this time of grieving, this time uh, of losing, Father God, a, a husband and a father and a friend. And we just pray your grace, your peace, a supernatural strength. And Father, I thank you as we're gathered today. I thank you for moving in a mighty way in our midst today. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining. And, and of course, we can continue to lift up uh, their family and praying for them. And Pastor Gil, if you'd come on up at this time. Amen. Well, praise God. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you guys so much for that. You know, I shared this last night, and actually we were talking about it this morning in class as well. We're going through our connections, uh, growth connections class. And uh, you know, I, I talked to my mom, and just to encourage you real quick, uh, when she was going back and forth about trying to make that, it's, it's, a, it's a hard decision. It's a decision that, you know, we never want to make, but no, we have to sometimes. And I told her, I said, it doesn't change who God is. You know, this whole situation our family is going through doesn't change who God is. God is still God. And he's still on the throne, amen? You know, we talked about that this morning in our Growth Connections class. You know, the facts of the Word of God are still facts. Even though we may have a fact failure, maybe we feel a failure in our life, it doesn't change the facts of God is still God. Amen? So welcome this morning. Thank you so much for that, Pastor. Thank you, church, for your prayers. I know my mom really appreciates it as well. We talked to her, obviously, on a regular basis. We're trying to figure out a safe time to go down with everything that's going on, but you can pray for us as we continue to, to reach out to my mom. And we want to welcome you that are watching us via live stream as well. This is it. May 31st, this is the last Sunday that we'll have the two services on Saturday night and Sunday morning. Starting next week, we'll all be back together. Amen? 
and we're excited about that. Now, there's some different things I know that we'll have to do a little bit different, but we're still planning on uh, having one service next week, so we're going to have that service on uh, June 7th. We're also going to be honoring our graduates as well, so if you're watching us via live stream or maybe you have a graduate in here, uh, have them wear their cap and gown next Sunday. We're going to honor them, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to just tell them how much we appreciate them, and I know, and I mentioned this last night, you know, they are going to have some graduations, and every graduate's getting, I believe, only four tickets. And I said last night, they had to sell those tickets to help with their college, amen? Say, I'll give you a ticket. Hey, thanks, Darren. I appreciate that, you know? You know, give, I'll give you a ticket for $500. Or pastor said 1000 He was reaching out more than I was. But uh, anyway, but, you know, we are, we want to celebrate those graduations, whether it's high school, college, whatever it might be, we want to celebrate on Sunday. So uh, wear your cap and gown and come on out. Got a lot of things going on. And let me just remind you that all of our things are on our events page now. There's also some handouts back there in the back with the different things that are happening as well. So grab one of them, but, you know, we don't do the bullets anymore. We do the handout. We, everything is on our events page. You can sign up for everything there. Also on Wednesday will be our first Wednesday service. That will actually be our first service all back together. I, mean, I don't know if you had a chance to watch Pastor and Pastor Linda's uh, Bible study that they were doing from their home. I thought it was really good. You know, the first week she wasn't on there. She was kind of in the back running the camera, you know, making sure he stood on point and everything, you know, taking the questions. But when we talked to her at staff meeting, we said, would well, be nice if they were both there, a cup of coffee. And I, like I told her, she was just in great and just engulfed in every word he said, you know, as he went through the Bible study. But she just didn't want to look at the camera a whole lot. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, it was really good, though. But starting on the first Sunday, we're going to all be back together. So come on out on Wednesday night. We're going to have a great time of uh, worship. We're going to worship and minister to the Lord. Also, uh, uh, we're going to, again, we talked about honor of graduates. And the last thing I'll mention here real quickly is our Camille House Ministries on May 12th. We're still doing that. What we need is, uh, thank you so much, we're fully funded. What we need is people to sign up to make uh, Jello cakes. If you don't know how to make a Jello cake, Google it, or you can ask my wife, and she's like Google Lori, amen? And you can ask her how to make it. She'll show you how to make it. But we're going to be doing uh, Jello cakes, and we still need people to help prepare and serve the meal. And so thank you so much for that. There's a lot of things going on. There's a men's breakfast on the 20th, and there's just far too much to mention here. But go to our events page and check it all out, and there's all kinds of fun things that you can get involved with. Pastor David, come on up. Good morning again, everyone, and glad you were here this morning. We're going to receive our offering, so if I could have some buckets up here for us older, us older ones that don't like using the app and stuff like that, so I'm just kidding, just kidding, all right? How, are you all alive this morning and awake? Okay, just want to, want to make sure we have somebody in the house that's their anniversary today, and so happy anniversary to the, uh, to the Nelsons. It's their, uh, uh, yeah, amen, so uh, praise God. And uh, we are glad you are here, and thank you again for your support during this time, and we appreciate it very much. And thank you for your prayers as well. Uh, we appreciate that as well. And uh, we're excited to get everybody back here together, Amen. and uh, we'll figure it out, right? We'll put out extra chairs if we need to put out extra chairs and, and such as that. Let me just real quick remind you, because uh, 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 Father's Day banquet, a uh, banquet, yeah, <laughs> Father's Day barbecue is on the 21st, uh, so uh, that'll be, we'll give you more details, there it is up there, but uh, it'll be after that Sunday morning service, and so we're excited about that, and it'll be at Lions Park. So uh, I was meditating last night and just meditating on the Word, and go over to Proverbs chapter 3, and I know I've shared this many a time about my dad. When I was uh, probably about ninth grade, I was walking through some things, and so my dad had a good fatherly talk to me, and, and he said, David, you need to read a chapter in the book of Proverbs a day, and I, I didn't do that, and I remember him giving me Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. And, you know, and I kind of, yeah, Dad, I'll do that. Why well, didn't? You know, every once in a while, maybe I went over and, because he'd say, are you reading, are you reading a, a chapter? And, and I would, I'd kind of like, because I didn't want to lie, you know. <laughs> and how do you go about it? Because I didn't want to lecture either. But um, years later, I began to read. And here in Proverbs chapter 3, and I, I wrote down, I forget where I even uh, uh, come across this, but in the, especially the first 10 verses, you have verse 1, you have a principle, and then verse 2, you have the result, and so on. You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, it says in verse 5. And then what? He shall direct your paths. Right? And you go down to verse 9, and it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions, and with the first fruits of all your increase. You know, as you look throughout the Word of God, 
start in the Old Testament, there's that principle first. When you put God first in everything, God will take care of you. He will honor you. Put first in your, you know, that's why, you know, we seek them early in the morning. That's why it's important. First thing in the morning. Why? Because our days get busy. And if we don't take that time in, in the morning to get, you know, read the Bible and spend some time with the Lord, it, I guarantee your day will get lost. And if it means you got to get up a little bit earlier and, you know, it should be a little bit earlier, easier now because it gets light so early. And if you have doves, I'm going to give me a pellet gun. I'm going to shoot those <laughs> doves, you know. And just, hoo, hoo. My wife doesn't mind them, but I'm just like, who, who, you, you, right? Anyway, so your barns, and he goes on, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, of course, we understand when it was written, agricultural society, this could be our checking accounts, our savings accounts, right? Our investments. You know, God will lead you. God will show you things. Talked about last night, there was a gentleman years ago, he was president uh, up in Canada. He lived in a small town, farmer. And he was president of full gospel businessman. He loved people, loved to see people get saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. Came out of a, he came out of the Roman Catholic background, got saved in his 30s and just on fire for God. And he, would, he was praying, and, and the Lord, he hadn't planted barley, mainly just wheat, and you know, maybe a few cash, what they call cash crops, like mustard and, 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 and stuff like that. And barley, he didn't want to plant barley because barley is just, you know, when you harvest it, it's itchy and it just, you know, just all kinds of, and the Lord said, I want you, or you need to plant a section of barley. And he kind of, you know, and the Lord spoke to him, good, you need to plant a section of barley this year. And so he did. Well, shortly after that, uh, the United States had a crop failure and the barley crop failure and barley just went through the roof as far as the prices and he made he made a killing, so to speak, on that. See, it pays to listen to God. But see, you have to be in the right place for him to be able to do that. You have to trust in him with all your heart, right? Didn't make any sense. He didn't want to do And there was other things that, that God, I mean, it's just amazing to see what, what God, that, that uh, another time, hail came. And he just went out and he spoke to that storm and he said, you will not hail on my crop because it was later in the season when the head, you know, when a crop comes out, when it heads, you don't want hail. And he spoke to that storm and didn't touch his, went all around, but didn't touch his crop. And he was able to testify of the goodness of God. And, and that, you know, and so the whole point is when we honor God, God will take care of us. Yes, Amen. Will. He always does. He promises to do that. So, hallelujah. It's good having our barns full, right? Amen. 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 So we have a confession. If you are new here, we have a confession we like to say. So why don't you join with us in this? This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow it because I love God and want to see Family Harvest Church continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. Building families that are happy, stable, fruitful, and blessed. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for many opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are opening because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. So, Father, we praise you and honor you, and we thank you that you are faithful to your word, Lord God, and faithful to your promises, Lord God, and we thank you today. And we honor you with our, with our increase. We honor you, Lord God, with what you blessed us with. We say as David, Lord, that you gave this to us, and now we're just giving back. What, what you gave to us. And Lord, I thank you for the faithfulness of Family Harvest Church, Lord. And Lord, through this time, and Lord, that we're able to, to be a blessing and to support our missionaries, Lord God. And many of them are going through challenging times as well right now. And we thank you. And Father, I thank you. Every need is met. I thank you, Lord God. Not only as Family Harvest Church as an entity, are we out of debt? And we call this building paid and paid in full. I thank you, Father God, that they are out of debt plenty more. They have plenty more to put in store. In Jesus' wonderful and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you may stand up and uh, 
If you have an offering to bring, you can either come to one of the buckets or we got baskets at the back and uh, we're going to continue to worship the Lord this morning. going to read a little bit of Psalms 105. You can keep playing. (laughs) Psalms 105 said, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises and tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exalt in his holy name. Rejoice you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Remember the wonders that he has performed. Hallelujah. I love that verse four. It just reminds me of this song. Search for him. We're going to search for you with all of our hearts today. We're going to seek. We're going to knock. We're going to open the doors of our hearts to receive the word. We just want to prepare ourselves for all that you have today, Lord. So Holy Spirit, come. We know you're on the inside. We invite you to have your way, have your way. Oh, I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise, and treasures that fade, are never enough. So we're going to praise you, Lord. Nothing. 
sing that. There's nothing. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Today, Jesus, there's nothing, oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Your presence in this place, oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing.
thank you, Lord, for amazing grace. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can come to the throne of grace and we can receive grace in our time of need, Lord God. And we thank you that there was grace for the root uh, as we came into the kingdom and the family of God. And Father, we thank you there is grace for the fruit and living our life, living our life as an example of the love of Jesus and what the love of Jesus will do in a person's heart. And what the grace of God will do when we, when we accept it and when we take it and we walk in it. And so we thank you and we honor you in this place today, Lord. We give you grace. We give you praise for your grace. And in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated and welcome once again. Welcome those of you that are watching by live stream. I, uh, you know, it seemed like April was a year long and then May was like two days long, yeah. right? It's just really gone really fast and it's hard to believe that tomorrow is, is June the 1st. And uh, so praise God for that. God is good. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to continue on. This will be the last uh, of the series on seasons. And uh, last night, uh, when we were singing that song, Come to the Altar, and there, something, God just, the Holy Spirit just spoke to my heart. So next Sunday, uh, I'll be uh, uh, just uh, what the Lord put in my heart, and of course, we're going to be honoring graduates and such. And so we're going to talk about, last week we talked about how to move through seasons. We looked at three things. We're going to look at three more things today. And, and our key scripture has been Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there is a season. And a time for every purpose under heaven. And we talked about that, how it's important that we understand that life is made up of seasons. You know, just naturally, the world, God created this world. And he said, let their, you know, the lights, let the lights in the sky and all these things, let them be for times and seasons, right? And then he says, as long as the earth exists, was the earth still existing? Right? There'll be seed time and harvest. And so we, if we understand that, 
that, that life is made up of seasons. And, and so we've shared some things. I just want to, uh, real quick, don't let a setback, don't let a situation or circumstance define your seasons or your life. Too many times people, something happens in their life and then they allow that to define the rest of their life. You know, I shared with you last night that, that we've all come from dysfunctional homes. You know, sometimes they say, well, I come from a dysfunctional home. Everybody does because of sin. Everybody has. You know, my mom and dad used to fight. I mean, they fought bad. And they, I mean, there was a couple times I thought, oh, my word, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I can remember one time my dad got so mad. I was homesick, and, and I was like first or second grade. My mom, my dad got so mad, and they, it started in the bedroom. It came out into the living room in, in our house. It wasn't a real big house, and, and my dad was just kind of, next thing I knew, bam, he hit the floor. I thought my dad died. I'm serious. Little kid, I was crying, and I was like, here's my dad. Like, well, I, I think his blood pressure just went through the roof, and he, and he passed out. Now, it was kind of interesting to me the very next day. We had a dishwasher, but anyway, <laughs> so, uh, but you know, they, and I can remember when I was about ninth grade, eight, eighth, ninth grade, I think I can't, uh, might have been a little bit seventh grade, and my mom and dad, my older brother was in Vietnam, and, 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 and my mom and dad, I, mean, I could hear them fighting, we had to be upstairs, I still remember the rock radio station, WLCY out of Tampa, Florida, and I would turn that thing up. So I couldn't hear them fighting downstairs and such. And, and so, you know, that has an impact on, on you as a child. But you know what? I determined I was not. My mom and dad loved each other, but man, they would fight. My dad was a salesman. And, and they'd get fighting. And all of a sudden, my mom would get really mad. She says, you're arguing for what I just was arguing for. You know, he would turn the, the whole argument around. So he was arguing what she was and that would just make her doubly mad, you know. And sometimes we'd laugh, and then when we laughed, I'd make her really, really mad. But, but see, we've all had situations in our life, but, but especially once we come to Christ, we can't allow those setbacks, those circumstances, those situations, unfortunate situations to define our life. And, and so often people do that. They, they, they have something that happened to them, and they just drag that thing, you know. We just got done singing our chains are gone. You know, cut loose that ball and chain. Whatever it is, it has happened to you. Get rid of it and, and such. And, and uh, it's important that we do that. And Because God said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, I, I have good thoughts towards you. I know what I'm thinking, and they're good thoughts. Good plans for good, not for evil. Plans for peace, for hope. And we talked about that. Don't, don't speak against your hope. Don't talk against your hope. Hope is that confident expectation. And, and you get hope from the same place you get faith from. It's from the Word of God. And then in Psalm 90, verse 12, it says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Proverbs 4, 7 says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, right? And in all you're getting, get understanding. A lot of times we think we need this and we need that. We look to natural things, but what we need is more wisdom. And that word, that word number means to weigh, it means to, um, uh, to measure out or make good use of our days. Talked about this a couple of weeks ago, you know, <laughs> if you're, you know, a time waster, you know what? God gives each and every one of us 24 hours a day. You've got a new day to start and make a determination. You know, if you fall down, you know what? Pick yourself, just get back up, right? Just get back up. I say, well, it's hard, Pastor. I know it's hard. You know, sometimes I think people think pastors or preachers, that we don't go through hard and challenging times. But, you know, sometimes I got to grab David Kibben by the, you know, by the collar and, you know, and shake him. You know, you, not literally. It's kind of hard to, you know what I'm saying? But I have to speak to myself. I have to encourage myself. I have to, you know what, this is just a season, right? And, and don't swallow what the world is saying. It's a new normal. No, it's a new season. We're going through a season. And, and it's been a tough season, but guess what? We're coming to the other side. Amen. And so, so real quick, we don't want to get stuck in a season. We talked about that. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, God said to them, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And in case you don't know which one to choose, therefore choose life. That's what he says. Therefore choose life. 
You have to make a choice. Sometimes people, I don't have a choice. Yes, you do. Now, I've never, you know, when I look at the Bible and I look at the Gospels, there was no demons that could keep people from Jesus. People say, well, I can't. Yes, you can. You can do all things. Amen. Just have to make a determination. Sometimes, like I talked about last week, if a tree falls on you, kick it off. Chew it through. Light it on fire. Do something. Don't just lay there. Because we all, we all had challenges. You know, we go around this room, each and every one of us. So make a decision that you're going to get the blessings of God that he has because it's a good plan. Number two, don't miss a season. And, and what causes us to miss a season? Disappointment. Right? Disappointment. Something happens on our job. Maybe we're expecting a raise. Maybe we're expecting a, you know, bonus, you know, what, whatever it may be, you know. Don't be like, you know, what's the, um, uh, you know, the Chevy Chase and the Griswold's Christmas. Yeah, yeah. You know, spend your bonus before you get it. Don't do that, right? In disappointment, especially when your tree, your Christmas tree burns down. You know, disappointment. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we're expecting something and we don't see it happen. Well, just keep plugging away. Don't give up on God because a prayer that, that you were praying didn't get answered. Just say, you know what? Okay, what, what is there? I'm not, I'm not going to let disappointment cause me to miss a divine appointment. Amen. Because, see, the enemy will come in. He's going to try and bring disappointment because he knows God has good plans for you. He knows that God doesn't think bad things towards you. So he's going to try and come in and, be, and, and bring disappointment so you miss your divine appointment. Because he knows. He may not know what that divine appointment is, but he wants you to miss it, whatever it is. Because he wants you to stay stuck. All right? He wants you to stay stuck in a season. Number three, never fail to reap a harvest in a season. Never fail, right? Sometimes people are like, wow, you know, this is a bad season. I'm ready to get out of it. No, no. What, what can I learn? What's a lesson I can learn in this season? What, what's a revelation? You know, we talk about this. We, God didn't cause this virus to come, but we can learn things from it, and God can teach us, and we can, you know, sometimes when bad things happen, yeah, we do press in because we realize we need God. We need more of God in our life. So maybe we dig more into the Word. Maybe we, we spend more time in His presence, and that's good. But it's not God that did it. And you say, well, God knew it was going to happen. Yeah, He knows everything. He knows everything. He knew Hitler was going to show up on the scene. You know what I'm saying? He knows all these things, and, and, but he, he gives people choice. Right? I find it interesting. People will say, of course, if it's on Facebook, it has to be true. But, yeah. but people will say, why didn't God stop this? But if God did stop it, or if God did something in their life that they didn't like, well, I don't like God controlling my life. And so I say, why? Because God gives us a choice. Yep. He gives us a choice. To, and, and, he, you know, and, you know, some people, it's like they want their cake and eat it too, or they want it both ways, and we can't, Right? And so, so reap something, a greater appreciation for God's faithfulness. Man, that was a tough season, but God is good. Yeah. And God was faithful. Yeah. God came through. Yeah. Man, sometimes I didn't think like it was going to happen, but, you know, Friday came. Right? Yeah, you know, Friday, payday. Payday came, yeah. right? Because God's a God of increase. God is always... Uh, I learned, learned this you know, after living in Florida and living in an um, uh, orange grove. And we had, we had more uh, uh, fruit than we, could, than we could ever eat. And, and I can remember walking out the door and, and about back here where the Russells are sitting, walk out. I can remember walking out on a crisp December morning and go and pick a grapefruit for breakfast. And then straight out, you know, about where the Nelsons are sitting was a navel, uh, navel orange tree. My dad loved it. He'd get irritated at the, the second German shepherd we had because she liked to eat the fruit. And she'd jump up and pick all the lower down fruit. So he couldn't get it. And we had 18 Valencia orange trees, which that's what they make orange juice out of. We had a tangerine tree that the raccoons loved. And, and we had a tangelo tree, which is a cross, and it's kind of a sweet tart. And, and, and we just had, we had different temple. I don't know if you ever heard of temple, real thick skin. And, and, and we had, oh, you could go out, and, you know, you could have breakfast, you know, grapefruit and oranges and, and all that. And I can remember all that fruit. It, you know, my dad, I can remember him waking as a teenager. You know, teenagers like to sleep in. Dave, David, I need some more oranges. 
I have to go out and pick out two or three, pick two or three sacks of oranges so he could make orange juice. And he said, I'll give you a penny for every orange you pick up off the ground. So I, that sounded kind of good until I, you know, until I kind of got the mushy ones and, you know. I found out the lawnmower chopped them up a lot better than I could pick them up. And, and, and so it's good fertilizer, you know, just keep fertilizing with, with oranges. But see, God's a God of increase. God's a God of blessing. And so you can learn something, have greater, become out of the situation wiser this season. Number four, we should enjoy what we can in every season. We should enjoy whatever we can. Now, some seasons are like in the natural. Some seasons are the, we enjoy. Spring and fall, right? What, what is that? It brings change. Spring, you know, it, it, uh, uh, we enjoy it because the flowers starting to come out and bloom and, you know, and such. And then fall, uh, some of us like it because it's football season, right? And, and or we, we just enjoy the colors and in spring and fall, and vibrant and colorful, and, and we can enjoy life, right? And, it, it, you know, what do we get in harvest? We, we harvest, or in fall, we harvest what maybe we planted in the springtime. But other seasons are like winter, right? Cold and barren. But guess what? You can enjoy it. You can come out of it. Sometimes we get, we think, oh, I don't like the, I don't like the winter, right? And in our life, sometimes we go through a cold, barren time. And, and, and I've had people come to me and they'll say, Pastor David, I just don't understand. You used to seem like God, you know, this was happening, that was happening, and, and, and I just don't see God moving. You're in winter, and that's okay. It's okay to be in a winter season, what happens in winter? It happens all over. In winter, things go dormant and things have a chance to rest. And a lot of us need to learn to rest. Some of us were just go, 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 go. And you, you have to take time to rest. God created. He created everything. He created. I mean, he even rested on the seventh day. But some people think they're bigger than God and, they're, and they just go, go, go. And then they wonder later on why they have health problems and they wonder why they're so stressed out. I guess it should have been for last night's uh, uh, people. I can say that again, right? Should have been for... No, no, see, those are... They might be a barren time, but you know what God's doing? God's doing things on the inside, and God's working some things out of you, but He's also working some things in you. Yes. And a lot of times we're just looking at, oh, He's working things out. No, He's also working things in you, and He's preparing you for spring, and He's preparing you for the harvest. And so don't ever despise at that time when it doesn't look like anything is happening. You know, Max Lucado wrote a book, God Works in the Night Watches. Yep. Yeah. And, and so often we, we're looking at it in the natural and we're just, man, it's cold and it's barren and man, why has anything happened? Just rest. God's working and God's doing things. And, he, and he's developing things on the inside of you and he's getting you ready for the next season. You know, as we come out of this season that we just went through, uh, not only as a church and as a, as a nation and as a world, you know, hopefully you, you, you took some time to allow God to work some things out. Mm -hmm. not, not work out, but work some things out of you, but also receiving what he has for you to get you ready for the next season. Because as I share, he's always a God of increase. He's not a God of decrease. Just going back to the oranges, you know, all those oranges that would fall on the ground and a lot of those oranges, they had seeds. And you think one seed can produce a tree. Well, how many oranges can be on one tree just in one year? And each one of those oranges has a potential. They have that seed packed on the inside of them. Pretty powerful. Yeah. And you plant that in the right conditions, guess what? You get another orange tree. And then God, God's a God of abundance and a God of increase. Yeah. Amen. And I believe he, he's done some of these natural things. Paul said this. Paul said this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, New Living Translation. He, said, he goes, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. And that speaks to me of seasons. He understood. He go through seasons in life. He said, I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Well, what is that secret? It's trusting God, right? 
It's putting our trust and our confidence in God, no matter whether things are going great or whether things just seem not to be happening right now, barren and cold. Guess what? We can learn to be content. Now, that content is not a case of rah, sarah, whatever will be, will come, blah, blah, blah. You understand what I'm saying? You can be content without, you know, some people say, well, I'm just content. Well, they just, they'll just sit there. And you know, don't want to just sit there. And so Paul said, whether it is with a full stomach or an empty, with plenty or little. And in every season, you're going to have an opportunity to get bitter. But you can choose again. Am I going to get better or am I going to get bitter? It says in Hebrews, it says, don't let a, a root of bitterness. Again, you have an enemy that's going to attack you. And he's going to try and bring offenses your way. He's going to try and bring all kinds of things your way. And you can make a choice. I'm going to get, I'm going to get better through this situation. You're going to have somebody that disappoints you. Maybe somebody that you look up to. Maybe somebody that you respect. They, they, you're going to have opportunity for them to disappoint you. What do you do? I'm going to choose to get better. I'm going to choose to learn from this. I think I shared this last week when I was in Bible school and uh, back years ago in, in Cleveland, Tennessee, and, and, and all these people, they thought this is the way it should be done, and this we should do this, and we should do that. And not, not that it's wrong to give suggestions, but it was just like, you know, really getting out of control. And, and uh, we had this uh, instructor get up, and she said, she said, when, this is the way we're doing it. This is the way we feel God's leading us to do it. When you have your own ministry, your own Bible school, you do it the way you feel God. And I'll never forget this. Sometimes you learn what not to do as much as you learn what to do. Learn what not to do. Sometimes, you know, it's kind of interesting. Us as adults, sometimes it's amazing how rebellious we can be. Well, we won't go there any farther than that, right? And then let me encourage you in this. Learn not to gr complain and grumble in a season. Learn not to complain. Paul again says in, in Philippians chapter 2, do everything without complaining. So really, really do everything. Yeah, do everything without complaining. You know what? You know why? If you go over and I can't remember if it's 1 Corinthians 10 or 2 Corinthians 10. But Paul's talking about there. He says that we learn from the Israelites, the example from the Israelites. And he lists all kinds of sins, idolatry, adultery, you know, all kinds of things. And then right in the middle of the verse, it says, and he says, and do not complain. I, do, I kind of find that interesting. And do not complain. Why? Because he said, and because he talks about the destroying angel coming. Do not complain. See, see, our complaining, just like your Thanksgiving attracts the favor of God and attracts the blessing of God, you know what complaining does? It attracts the enemy. I don't know about you. I don't want the enemy either. We attract, right? Faith attracts and fear attracts. And, and, and if you're complaining all the time about this and about that and, and all that type of thing, you know what? You're opening up the door for the enemy to come and attack, your, attack you or attack your family. And learn to just be grateful, right? Learn to see the good. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about that love sees the best. I know that's hard, Right? Family situations or in close situations, hard to see the best, but we, we need to choose. So do all things, Paul says, without complaining and disputing. So, so accept the fact that you, you, you're going through a cold season, but it's not a bad thing. I can enjoy this. I can take some time to just rest. Let, let God just minister and help and, and, and work some things out of me and work some things in, him, in me, and, but keep believing and keep trusting. Number five, we don't want to grow weary in the midst of a season. Amen. Sometimes we grow weary. We don't want to grow weary of doing good. That's one of the fruit of the Spirit is goodness, right? We don't want to grow weary during that time. And, you know, when, when, when sometimes when things feel uh, hard and, you know, it feels like it's like you're pedaling on a bike uphill against the wind both ways, <laughs> right? Right? You know, remember the stories? Maybe your parents don't do that, but I can remember. Oh, we walked to school in the snow uphill both ways. <laughs> right? And I, you know, that's hard for me to relate in Florida because we never got snow. <laughs> you know, so really, Dad. Right? Hard to relate. But anyways, 
You know, sometimes it does. It feels like you're peddling, you know. Uh, we've been walking, you know, and, and doing some things, getting better shape and, you know, changing our diet and such like that. And so we've been out walking. In fact, the other day we walked three miles. And I was like, wow, we walked three miles. That was really, you know. And then, uh, and then the next day we said, let's only walk two miles. <laughs> just, just kidding. But, but we did. But, but, you know, we want to get, we have bikes and we want to get, you know, and if you're ridden around uh, Cheyenne, there's hills, right? And so sometimes, and praise God for 10 speeds, you know, where you can shift the gears or 15 or 20, whatever, and you, you know, and so you're going up that hill, and it, man, you know, and you get to the top of the hill, and there's another hill. <laughs> but you do eventually go down. Amen. Right? What, what's my point? Press through that. Mm-hmm. Right? Press through that. It, it, don't get weary in doing good. Sometimes we get weary and we'll let weariness and, and such like that. And you know, Paul, after he talked about in those verses about, in verse 11, 12, I've learned how to be content. Verse 14 or verse 13, we all know it. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. See, the, point, see, the, the important thing, I've got to draw on the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I'm beginning to feel weary and doing good, I need to go to the throne of grace. I don't need to quit. I don't need to give up. Here again, life's made up of seasons, and there's going to be challenges. I think sometimes we're afraid of a challenge. Don't be afraid of a challenge. that, That helps. That develops some character. It develops some courage in your life. And don't be afraid of those things, right? Press through them. Keep pedaling that bike. And it may not, you might come to another hill and say, well, I'm going to conquer this hill, right? You know, like, like, like Caleb, right? I think I shared this. I find it so interesting that, that the hill that he wanted is where the giants were. And 45 years before, he said, right, we can take them, right? We can take them. And so keep pedaling. Don't, don't just sit on, the, uh, on, the, on, <laughs> you know, on your seat. Uh, Pastor Gill teaches uh, uh, Ministry of Helps in, in CBTC, and he uses uh, a book by um, Reverend Bell, Buddy Bell. And, and Buddy Bell, he's hilarious. And, and I can, I'll never forget, and, and we did it years ago as a church. We has a video series, and we went through the video series. And, and he talked about, you know, people say, well, I don't feel led. He says, I'm going to buy some lead and put it on my book table. And then when people come up and say, I don't feel lead. Here, you felt lead. Now go and do something for, something for Jesus, right? And, and he, had some other, he had some other funny sayings. You know, people will say, God, I'm being used, right? And after they praised God, you know, the, the, just a week before, they said, God, use me. God, I'm being used. Don't get worried. Draw on. Jesus said this. My yoke is what? Easy. And my burden is light. Mm-hmm. And it's like we forget to go to him. And we get weary. And, and we get down. And, and we allow weariness. And, and when weariness comes, we're, that's when we're tempted to complain. And that's where, no, you know what you do? Run. Run to the throne. Run, run to him. Why? Because he'll help you. Yes. And he'll take that weariness out of your soul. He'll take the weariness out of your soul. And, and not to make this a cliche, but, but focus on the right thing. Why am I doing this? Why am I, why, why am I doing this? I'm doing it because I love Jesus. And I want to be a blessing to people. Whatever, whatever the situation. Paul said in Galatians 6, verse 9, he said, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Just the right time. God's always on time. So don't cave in. Don't give up. Don't get weary. Don't quit. Right? You know, winners never quit. Quitters never win. Right? Don't give up. Keep doing and you will reap. You will reap because God promised you will reap a harvest in due season. Amen. And then finally, we need to monitor our seasons. And the truth of the matter is we simultaneously see we're going to go through different seasons. If you have children, you're in a season, right? But you're going to be in a different season concerning your finances or concerning your health. We, we go through, and so it's important that we monitor those seasons and we, that we are aware. Don't, don't just go through life just kind of, here again, case sera, sera, whatever it's going to be. Be aware. Be aware of, of what's going around, on around you spiritually. 
Say that again. Be aware of what's going around, on around you spiritually. We, we have to understand that, that we have an enemy. Paul said it this way. He says, we don't fight against what? Flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, be, you know, you wake up in the morning and you just feel heavy. You're like, huh. Like I'm talking about heavy in spirit, heavy in your emotions. Don't just say, well, you know, I guess I just atmospheric changes, you know. And I saw on the weather channel they said a low pressure is coming in, so I just, you know. No, don't accept that, right? You wake up grouchy in the morning, let her sleep in. Oh, man. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Cliff. Yeah. That's a cliff. Let's see. Where were we? Yeah. Let's <laughs> spirits on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you yeah, understand? Make a decision. You know what? Why? 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 And I just slept all night. Why am I feeling grouchy? Why am I feeling heavy? Realize you have an enemy, and he don't want your day to go good, and so he wants your day to start bad. Right? So what if the squirrel ate all the bird food? You know what? Yeah, that's real simple, you know? But we allow things, and, and you know what? Just take time to pray. Ask the Holy, Lord, what is this? Because you know it's not from God. Lord, what is this? And when he reveals it to you, then, then come against it. No, I'm not going to put up with this. You know, I think what some of it is, I, you know, if I can just be real honest, our flesh. And our flesh just likes to be pampered. It does. And so we just want, you know, well, you know, just all this and that and put it on Facebook and, you know, so we get everybody to, you know, oh, you poor person. Because we like to be, our flesh likes to be petted. You know what? It's time as the church that we rise up. We, we have so much word, especially here in America, we have so much of the word of God, but yet, I don't know. I mean, well, we don't put it into practice. I mean, man, we could got you version. You go on and you can, you know, and we can connect and, you know, and all these kind of things. We've got all kinds of Bibles and, and such like that, but it, it, it's just like, no, I'm going to make a determination. I'm not going to allow my flesh. And whatever this is, I break your power in the name of Jesus. And so things are going to overlap. And, and so the key to monitoring your seasons is don't take the junk into the next season. Right? At home, we take the garbage out every once in a while, don't we? When it gets full, what do we do? We take it out to the trash bin. And then, you know, depending on where you live or whatever, once a week they come and they pick it up. Right? You just let it build up and build up and build up. Right? I used to get mad because my sister never had to take the garbage out. It was always my responsibility. But anyways, take the, you know what? Get the garbage out, out of your life. Don't carry bad attitudes into the next season. Get rid of hurts and offenses. I, I read this this morning. And I typed it out and then it disappeared. And I'm glad I remembered what, what I found this. Don't bring a brick from a past season into a new season because you will, begin, you will continue to build the same house. I'll say that again. Don't bring a brick from a past season into a new season because you'll continue to build the same house. I thought, boy, that fits right in with my, with my message. And I was thinking about that. We, we, we bring a brick of bad attitude. We bring a bit, brick of bitterness. We bring a brick of all hurts and, and, and all kinds of things we bring. We just keep dragging, and pretty soon that thing just gets bigger. You know, that ball and chain. No, get rid of it. In Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, and, and this is what I'm talking about. We need to be spiritually awake. What's going on? Why am I feeling this way? What, what's going on? Paul writes, and do this knowing that the time, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It's high time. Seasons, times, right? 
It's when we're going through that, let's be aware. Our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. See, it's important that we stay sober, stay spiritually awake. So as we close today, so I want you to ask yourself some questions as we close not only this message, but this series. We need to ask. It's okay to ask yourself some questions. It's okay to get introspective. Just don't live there. You understand what I mean by that? Some people get so introspective. They get so, and then they, they just is like, ah, oh, they get lost in that introspectiveness and they, 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 they get depressed. They can get, because they're just looking in, they see, you know what? Jesus won't leave you there. He'll show you. He'll show you dark areas in your heart. He'll show you things that aren't right, but he'll shine the light to bring you out. And so where am I right now? Not, not physically in the building. Where am I spiritual? Where am I emotionally? Where am I right now? And then the second thing, what is in my life that is not a part of God's plan? Not things in my life that are not a part of God's plan. And, and your husband or your wife is part of God's plan. So don't like, you know, well, okay. Your children are part of God's plan. Right? You know, Sometimes, you know, my mom would make, you know, statements and that, you know, I got a little bit older, kind of thinking about it, you know, she would say, I'm going to knock you into next week. You know, joke around, my mom believed in time travel, I'm going <laughs> to knock, right? And then later on, you, you kind of think about it, that doesn't make any sense, you know, but anyways, what, what is in my life? What, what do I need to get rid of, but what do I also need to allow to come in, right? Ephesians 5, verse 16 and uh, 15 and 16, and then see when you identify those things and leave them in that past season. He says here, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The word redeem means to buy up the word here, redeem, to rescue from loss and to improve the opportunity. To improve the opportunity. Yes, we bought a two-man kayak. Uh, before we were married, a group of us had gone, had gone camping on Labor Day. And so her, her sister and brother-in-law had a two-man kayak. So we decided to, uh, we wanted to try it out. Good test for pre-marriage counseling. Oh, I think I'm going to put that in my <laughs> pre-marriage counseling, you know, have, have them. If you can paddle a, a kayak or a canoe without spinning around on the lake and no. getting into the crazy cycle, you're going to have a good marriage. And, and, and so we bought one, and, and uh, we kind of realized it was a little bit small for me. <laughs> I'm six foot two, and it's only like 10 feet, six inches long, the whole, like on the inside and such like that. And, and so we were like, we're going to improve our opportunity, uh -huh. right? <laughs> but whatever it is, make a choice. Whatever it is, take, take you know, if you desired, I don't know if this is for somebody in this room, if you desired to continue your education, get a master's or something, I don't know why I'm speaking, I think this is the Holy Ghost. Maybe God's been dealing with you about getting your master's in something. Guess what, you're going to improve yourself naturally, but, but also there's a point in why God wants you to do that. So whoever that's for, you just receive it, watch them by live stream. Prove your opportunity. Whatever the situation may be, whatever the circumstance may be. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able, who's him? Jesus. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. His power is in us. And he will do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that you could ask or think. The problem is we don't ask. And the problem is we don't think about it. Don't just go through life again. I've shared this before. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Well, that's my lot in life. No, no. Change your lot. Change your situation. And the biggest way you do that is by what you say out of your mouth. Begin to speak what God's word says over your situation, but also over your future. You know, I was so impressed when we, we got an opportunity last Friday, we could go Friday to... to uh, go to uh, Justin McWilliams and Shannon Kirby's and, 
Uh, I think some of you know who Justin is and Shannon. They were here a few times. He got married last Friday. We, we went through, we did marriage counseling with them. And, and, and when the minister was sharing some things at the, at the beginning, and, and he had talked to both of them, and he talked about how Justin, how both they had waited for the right person to come along, but he talked about how Justin had taken the Word of God and he found scriptures in the Word of God that apply to having a wife. Like in, in Genesis, it's not good that man should live alone. Right? God created. And then, you know, in Proverbs, I think it's 18, 21, who finds a wife finds a, a good thing. I mean, you got to say it just right. A good thing, right? Right? He who finds a wife. And, and then he had some other scriptures. And I thought, wow. What did he do? He took the word. He didn't just sit there and say, well, you know, I'm such and such an age. And, you know, no. What did he do? He took the word. And he put, brought that word before Jesus, who's the high priest of our confession, who is our high priest. What did the high priest do? They, they, they saw to it. In the Old Testament, when they brought their sacrifices, the high priest sought to it to bring that before God on behalf of the people. Well, now we have Jesus Christ as the great high priest, and he's the high priest over our confession. That means he watches over our confession. God, in another place, God says, I watch over my word in Jeremiah to perform it. So as the high priest over the word of God or over our confession... He watches over to see that it's performed. Glory to God. So you bring it before him. Don't just go through life. Why? Because our steps as a believer are ordered of the Lord. Do you all believe that? I do. I believe my steps are ordered of the Lord. But I've also done, I, I'm not just sitting back. You know, I'm not a hyper-Calvinist. Whatever God wants is going to happen is going to happen. Right? No, I understand God's given me the right to think and to make a decision, but I depend on him. And as I depend, going back to Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, laying not unto you what? Your own understanding, but in all your ways he will what? Direct your path. Wherever it may take you. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So leave those things behind. Continue pressing forth in faith. Continue pressing forth with what God has called you to do. You know, don't look right or left. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Just what, what does God have me to do? And then don't leave any season empty-handed. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Get anything out of this? Amen. Praise God. So let's just worship Him. Let's just worship the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. You know, what I, I, what I spoke earlier about, you know, and it might not be a master, it might just be continuing your education. I just heard this. I don't have the finances. You step out in faith, the finances will come. You step out in faith, the finances will come. God always provides a way. If God put it in your heart, if that thing, you're like, where did this come from? And I guarantee it's probably God. God will make a way. It doesn't seem like there is a way. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands. Father, we just worship you. And I pray for each and every person, those watching the live stream this morning. Lord, and I thank you for touching hearts today with your love and with your grace. Lord, letting you, letting us know, Lord, you're here. And Lord, you've been with us in this season. And we have just walked through. And Lord, you're going to be with us in the next season. And Lord, we believe it'll be a greater season because you are a God of increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just come against, I just sense there's a, in someone, whether they're watching by live stream, just a, I don't know how to describe it, just a troubling on the inside. Lord, I just speak to that in Jesus' name. I just command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Because you're the God of all peace. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. So if you're watching by live stream, if there's somebody here, just receive his peace. Whatever it is, whatever's been troubling you, whatever's been uh, irritating. Now there's times, just like a washing machine agitation, it's good because it cleans the clothes. Sometimes that agitation that's going on on the inside is from, it's, it's gone. But I sense there, this, this isn't God. This is the enemy just trying to trouble you, trying to just... Uh, agitate you is really what the, the word is. And so 
receive his peace receive his peace into your heart right now because he's the prince of peace hallelujah father i just sent you right now i thank you lord whatever whoever that may be in the name of jesus just receive it say say I, in fact just say it. i receive it right now in jesus name hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord jesus we honor you we praise you we magnify you lord thank you father thank you father glory glory lord let's stand thank you lord jesus god is a good god amen well, i don't know about you i'm really looking forward to first wednesday we come a night of worship and and ministry to the lord and then next sunday hallelujah god is a good god he's an awesome yes. god thank you lord Amen. thank you father hallelujah thank you father thank you father praise his holy name father we just worship you and we honor you holy spirit thank you lord lord i just thank you each and every person in this room i thank you 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 promised lord our needs would be met and Father, I thank you right now. Lord, no matter how it may be, sometimes we wonder, well, how is it going to happen? Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, you do provide. Lord, not only will you provide, I, Lord, I thank you for miracles. I thank you, Father, for times, Lord, maybe when it seems things are short, Father God, that you multiply, that you multiply. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Just only Jesus and glorify you. And we thank you. Hallelujah. So don't forget, we're praying for Pastor Gill and his family. His mom's name is Teresa. Just continue to lift them up and just the wisdom. They need wisdom. God, they need wisdom to know when to go down and just the path and you know all those things to, to go and help his mom. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Before we go, real quick, anybody have any uh, prayer requests? Anything specific? Okay. All right. Chris. Hannah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Father, we just come. If you're near uh, um, anyone, just stretch your hands out, you know, and over here towards Gabriel. And if you're okay with them touching you, if you're not, that's fine too. And so, Father, we just come. We know that you're a God who answers prayer. And Father God, we pray for Hannah. And Lord God, Lord, we've been standing in faith with Christy and her brother and her family. And Lord God, we just thank you for a miracle. And Hannah's lungs in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for all that the doctors have been doing. But Father, we thank you. You're the great physician. In the name of Jesus, we speak to Hannah's body again. And we command life to come in to her lungs in the name of Jesus. And we bind that. We break that over her body. We, we tell you, devil, you're not going to have her in Jesus' name. Because God has a plan for her life. And so we decree that over her. She will live. And she will live a strong and healthy life in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray for Meg's uh, daughter, Shannon, and we just pray over this situation and pray peace into the situation. We pray, Father, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to come right now in the name of Jesus for Meg and for Shannon. And Lord God, we just, we just come against the enemy. We break the power of the enemy in Jesus' name. Pray for your peace and your grace. And Lord, we lift up Gabriel and his family and we pray for his mom Melissa and we just thank you for the healing power of God to operate in her body in Jesus name we release that and Father whatever they need we just thank you Father God for you demonstrating your love to them through Gabriel Lord God and through others that they'll see Jesus loves them in 
Jesus cares about them. Jesus has provided a way through his cross, through his blood. And Lord, we thank you for that open door in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for healing our arm in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy. He's so good. God is good. He's a wonderful Savior. Amen.